Hey guys, uh, so today we are going to be going over ciders, hard ciders in particular. Um, so a couple months back, uh, it's now November, I want to say it was probably around Labor Day weekend, uh, there was a local orchard near me that actually was allowing us to show up with vessels just to fill up some of their fresh cider that was unpasteurized, uh, untouched, wasn't even put through UV yet, um, so it was completely just pressed and then stored really cold. Um, we all, my homebrew club and I showed up, uh, with about 95 gallons worth of vessels and, uh, brought it all home, which was total pain in the ass to carry everything home in vessels that don't really seal. Um, but we got them here. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to be going over how to add your late additions, what you actually need to add, uh, the basics to cider making. Uh, I have made a previous batch before, but this would be my second and third batch. Uh, so one batch is actually, you, uh, utilize the... White Labs Funky Cider Blend, um, and then the other one was just a, an Al Yeast. I think I used the White Labs English Al Yeast, um, and I actually dry hopped that one. So at this point, the ciders have been fermented out. They're done primary. They've been way past it. Um, I'll go over what I already added to it and what I need to add, and then we're going to keg it. And then we'll uh, taste it and see how that comes out. Um, so we'll go through that. So before we uh, go into the additions after fermentation, I want to go over what you guys need to do before fermentation with the cider. So you do not actually need fresh pressed cider. It doesn't have to be anything um, from an orchard. You can totally go to the store and get something. You ideally want to get something that is unpasteurized. You definitely want stuff that has not had any potassium sorbate in it. Um, anything with any additives like that, they're going to kill the yeast. There's going to be no fermentation happening. Um, so you would have to get something if you're, I know out by me, there's Ziggler's, they make a uh, unpasteurized cider. Usually the unpasteurized stuff does not have a long shelf life, so you usually don't see this in the supermarket, hence why you need to go to an orchard. Um, you can also find any local orchard that does uh, apple picking. You can get a couple barrels of that, um, or uh, bushels, I, I should say. Um, I believe you need like five bushels for five gallons, which is actually a lot of apples. Um, but the good thing with that is you can pick the different types of apples. So the, the apples I actually used in this video um, are actually sweet apples. Uh, it's more for a drinking cider rather than a hard cider. Usually hard ciders are more tart, uh, bitter apples, usually the ones you won't eat. That's usually what is used for ciders, especially if you're trying to do an English cider. Um, but you can use any apple, you just got to do some more additives. Um, so in this, we're going to be adding a lot more things towards the end than you would for a traditional English cider that you would use English apples. Uh, so what I did with these is I added, uh, Camden tablets, uh, beforehand. That's to kill off any wild yeast. Totally an optional step. You do not need to do that step. Um, if you want to let a wild fermentation go, just get some fresh cider that's not been pasteurized and just let it ride and you should get a wild fermentation eventually. Um, I use the Camden because I wanted the yeast that I had purchased to be the only yeast really to go. Um, so what I did is I crushed up one tablet per gallon of uh, wort or uh, must for ciders and wines. Um, crushed it up, threw it in, let it sit for about three days. Uh, I think you only really need to let it sit for 24 hours, but I just let it sit for a little longer. Um, I also added pectic enzyme, which is a must in ciders if you want to get a clear cider. If you do not use pectic enzyme, it will end up as a murky mess, almost looking like mud. Um, yeah, similar to what what my dry hop version looks like now. I did use pectic enzyme in that, but it, it, that cloudiness that you'll see from the hops is almost similar to what you'll get if you don't use pectic enzyme. Um, what pectic enzyme does is it breaks down the pectin from the apples that causes the haze in the uh, cider. So if you've ever seen a fresh cider that you drink, it's really hazy, it's murky, that's the pectin. Um, so the pectic enzyme will drop that out. You do want to try to add that in the beginning. You don't need to, though. The only one you really have to put in the beginning is the camden. And you do, again, that's optional. Um, if you forget to add the pectic enzyme, not a big deal. Add it during fermentation or at the end of fermentation. It won't kill you. Just don't add a camden once you pitch your yeast. Um, so we'll go into uh, what the ciders look like and what we're going to add today. So here are my two ciders. And you can tell there's a pretty big difference. This cider on the left is actually the funky cider uh that that one is just used with the white labs funky cider blend uh this one on the right has been dry hopped you can tell by the top there's still some of the hops sitting on the top and it's pretty hazy just from the hop haze um ideally you'd like to cold crash this uh i'm not going to because of time so it'll cold crash in the keg i'll have a little bit of sludge but not a big deal and then this one we're just going to treat and put into a keg so um, again, with these, they've been fermenting out for a little over two months. They are, they are all ready to go. 
Um, gravity, the current gravity was uh, just below 1. I think it came out to 0 0.998, which is okay for a cider. Ciders do end up tend to be very, very dry. Um, so what we're going to be adding today is... We have the pectic enzyme, which we already added, but you can add today. We have our acid blend. And with this acid blend, we have citric, maltic, and tartric acid. Um, the difference between these is citric acid comes from citrus fruits. Um, I believe the tartaric acid comes from wine, uh, grapes, um, and the malic acid comes from apples. Uh, I may be backwards with the malic and the tartaric, but there, that is the difference between the three. One is from citrus, citric fruits. One is from grapes, uh, from the seeds and the skins, and the other one is from the apples. Again, the, the seeds and the skins. Um, this is you, is great for uh, ciders like I have, where you have a very sweet cider. Um, the apples are not very tart. They don't have a lot of tannins to them, or I'm sorry, uh, a lot of acid to them, bitterness. This is going to kind of give you a little bit of that acidic kick that kind of balances out the sweetness. Um, and we have our, oh, it's actually the wrong thing. <laughs> I'm going to go grab the other thing that is the correct one, which is the wine tannins. You don't want to add any calcium carbonate. But before I do that, let's just move that out of the way, uh, we have our wine conditioner. I am using wine conditioner. This is good to use, especially if you plan on um, carbonating naturally without a keg, if you want to uh, bottle carb uh, or just use sugar to carbonate. This is a good one to use because this is unfermentable um, to a certain extent. There is, it will ferment if you put enough in, but if you just put enough in to kind of back sweeten, this should not ferment, should not restart fermentation. Um, an option you have if you don't want to do that is potassium sorbate. So here's our wine tannin. Um, again, this is just used, this, you get this from the seeds and the skins of the grapes. Um, this helps with sweet ciders. When you're using those apples that don't have a whole lot of tannins, um, basically the apples that would be in a commercial cider. Um, just showing you what the potassium sorbate looks like. It's right here. You can see they're just almost, they almost look like rice. This is an older bag. Um, but th what this does is it will kill the yeast. It will kill any fermentation and basically um, you will not be able to carbonate if you use something like potassium sorbate. So if you're kegging, that's great. You can use that. But if you are going to back sweeten with anything, um, brown sugar, honey, ma uh, maple syrup, anything like that, you need to use potassium sorbate. The yeast will kick back up and you will have fermentation. Um, as long as you're kegging, that's fine to use. Uh, if you're not kegging, you can use this. You will need it to sit longer and then you can actually repitch yeast, but it is not guaranteed that it will work. So that is why I'm gonna use wine conditioner. So what we're gonna to do today is actually what most modern brewers do is we're gonna take a couple samples of the cider. Um, and what we're going to do, just for this video's purpose, I'm going to over uh, pitch the acid blend in one. I'm going to over pitch the wine tannin in one, just so we can get a taste of what the tannins and the acid blend uh, taste like in high uh, levels. This is good to do, just so you know what you need to add when you're tasting. And then we're going to have two other samples that we're going to mess around with and see if we can get our levels to come to where we want them to. Because with cider, it's all about balance. There is no right or wrong. Um, in most cases, they tell you with the wine tannin, you should never add more than a quarter of a teaspoon to one gallon of must or cider. Um, so for ours, they're five gallon batches, so I should never add more than a quarter, uh, five quarters of a teaspoon. Um, so that's a teaspoon and a quarter. I shouldn't really add more than that. I probably won't in this case. Uh, I believe with the acid blend, the recommended dosage would be around a teaspoon of acid blend per gallon of uh, wort or must. Um, that's going to be pretty tart. You're going to have some acidity with that. Um, you usually do that when you back sweeten. If you're not going to back sweeten, you want a drier cider, you definitely want to come down on the acid blend and not go as high. Um, the wine conditioner, the, I, I'm not sure on the recommended dosage with that. That's really just to taste. You get it to the sweetness that you like and then you stop. Um, so we're going to do that with the wine conditioner and those. We are not going to add potassium sorbate because we are using the wine conditioner, um, even though I am kegging. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, and that's what we'll do. So we'll go from there. Uh, a lot of this stuff I found online. I've talked to people who've made cider. Uh, it's pretty ready, readily available information. So... Any of this stuff, you can f go online and find anything. I'll try to add some links to the uh, to this the detail in the video for anybody that's interested. So let me uh, collect our samples, and then we will get started on trying uh, different um, acid blends and wine tannin levels. So here are our three roughly 100 milliliter samples. 
100 milliliters is good because it's a, a nice round number that you could easily uh, scale up for when you're ready to add back to your uh, full batch. So what we're going to do here is this one. We are going to uh, do a quarter of a teaspoon of acid blend. This one's going to get a quarter of a teaspoon of wine tannin. And then this one is going to be the one that we try to um, get to what we want the full batch to come out to. So the reason these are different colors, this one has a little bit more yeast in it. So I actually, I'm going to reverse that. This one and this one are going to be the ones we dilute. This one is actually going to be the one that we do the test batch just because this is more what I want the keg to come around to. So again, we'll do wine tannin, acid blend, uh, the real thing. So what we're going to do is dilute with a quarter of a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon, which is a lot for this little bit. This is just enough for me to really get a feel for um, what the difference is going to taste like with uh, each of the additions. And then this one we are going to, we are actually going to measure each addition we throw in so that way we can calculate it up for the main batch. And this cider that we took a sample from is actually the uh, Funky Cider Blend. So let me get uh, my teaspoons out and we're going to dilute, we're going to do again wine tannin and acid blend. So we have now mixed in our wine tannin and our acid blend. You can see the colors have changed just a tad. This one has changed a whole lot. Again, the wine tannin is a dark color because, again, it's coming from the skins and the seeds of the grapes. Um, this obviously will not be what your cider looks like. Um, again, we did a quarter teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon, which is a pretty concentrated. There is an article online that tells you the exact concentration for these. Um, you can look that up if you're interested, but this is, again, just to see what these are going to taste like. Um, wine tannin does take a little bit, so I would mix this and taste your acid blend first. This takes a little bit of time to kind of settle. It does not dissolve very easily, so when you add this, you need to stir. So make sure you uh, have a way of stirring or shaking your uh, cider when you add this. This per, uh, dissolved pretty easily, so we're going to try this one first. Uh, another thing you can do that I for actually forgot to do here, but I did taste beforehand, is get a um, get a sample of the regular uh must just so you know what it kind of tastes like compared to before you add additions um i did taste it so i remember uh it is very dry you'll find that cider before additions is pretty bland uh, you get a little bit of a sulfur smell which is fine that does happen with cider what you can do is while it's fermenting vent it every now and then and get the sulfur out it will come out on its own especially once you carbonate but uh, that is normal if you stir it up or shake it it will definitely uh, get some of that sulfur out um, so we're going to try the acid blend first So obviously, with it super concentrated, <laughs> it's super concentrated, so you're going to get it very acidic. It's very tart, but it does give you the flavor of the apple back. So again, I was saying it's very dull before the additions. That acid blend actually gave me more of that tart appleness, uh, if, if that makes sense. Um, so that's definitely what that's going to add to it. Uh, my mouth, a little bit, it's pretty harsh because it is, um, it is concentrated. But again, it just kind of brings back more of that appleiness to it. As far as smell goes, it still smells about the same. Nothing really changed there. Um, probably going to let this settle just a little bit more. So I'm not drinking pure tannin. So uh, we'll let this sit for another like five minutes. And then we will uh, give that one a try and see what the tannins do to it. All right. So now we are going to be trying our wine tannin diluted uh, sample. So let's give this a try. Again, no smell difference. Not a whole lot of taste difference. It almost it gives you that like drying effect on your mouth. So it kind of dries it out a little bit. Almost almost makes it like like my mouth. I kind of feel like I've cotton mouth right now. So that's what the wine tannin does. And I'm glad I did that because I had no clue what the tannins do. Um, so it almost kind of makes it a little almost fuller, creamier. Um, I don't know if that's just because it's kind of not dissolved fully or if it is what it actually does, but it definitely dries the mouth out a little bit. Um, that'll actually be a good complement to the, the tartness from the um, from the acid blend. And then when we add the wine conditioner, I do, I'm not going to do a sample of that just because sweetness is a pretty general um, taste. So what we're going to do is just do the sweetness in the final batch and kind of get to where we want our sweetness to go. So what we're going to do, the big thing here is make sure you measure from here on out. Um, one, for repeatability, if you want to repeat it from uh, different batches, but also because you're going to need to measure to go up to the bigger batch. So it does help to have a scale that can measure fractions of a gram. 
as you can see here I'm trying to get to 0.25 grams which is a very small amount there we go so we're right around 0.25 so that's our acid blend we're going to add that in get that back to zero I think what I'm going to do here is about a tenth of a gram of wine tannin there you go so we're going to do that of the wine tannin just enough of that in there let me mix this up slight color change to it um, you can see it's still kind of dissolving so I'm gonna let this dissolve a little bit I'm gonna let that sit and we're gonna give it a little sample of that um, I am recording over here how much of each I'm putting in so for our acid blend we put in 0.25 and our wine tannin we put in 0 0.10 definitely make sure you're recording this all right, that looks a little better. So let's try this out. It's so already the smell. Um, I guess the mixture of both of them, the apple, more apples coming out. Um, it's a lot better than it was. So let's give this a try. It's a good mix. It's a little, it's a little tart right now. That's mainly because I haven't added any of the wine conditioner yet. So we're going to do that next. We're going to add some wine conditioner and kind of get some sweetness in there too. When you add these without the sweetness, it is going to be a little more um, drying. But this right now almost tastes like you bit into a, 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 a little bit more of a tart apple. Um, it's not bad. I think this actually may be the level that we go with. It's got just enough of the drying to it, but it just needs a little more sweetness. So we're going to add a little wine conditioner and then we'll see how that tastes. So I just added in about an eighth of a teaspoon, which was half of a quarter of wine conditioner and mix that in. So we'll try this now. So it did sweeten it a little bit. It's definitely a little sweeter on the uh, tongue. I think Still just a little tart. So I think what we're going to do, add just a little bit more wine conditioner and see how that goes. The good thing with these samples is, since it is pretty tart right now, if the wine conditioner does not bring the tartness down, what I'm actually going to do is just back off on the wine, uh, on the acid blend, uh, when we put it into the uh, final batch. Again, this is just kind of giving you an idea of where to start. It's better to be under when you go to the main batch than it is to be over. You can always add, but you can never take out. So again, this is there's no real science to this. I'm just kind of playing around with uh, different additions. Um, if it is overly tart in your sample, not a big deal. Either take another sample or just decrease it when you go into the main. Again, you can always add, but you can never take away. So I'm going to add a little more wine conditioner to see if this changes it, gets some of that tartness out from the acid. Um, if it doesn't, what I'm going to do is kind of go back to the wine conditioner level that I'm at now, and I'm going to back off on the acid blend in the final batch. So let's, let's add another quarter of a tea, uh, another eighth of a teaspoon and see how this tastes. So I've just added in our uh, second eighth, so now we're at a quarter of a teaspoon of wine conditioner in the sample. Much better. That's actually, that is perfect. It's got a little bit of drying to it, which I like. When once this gets carbonated, it's gonna taste pretty on point. Got a nice apple flavor. The flavor's definitely um, gotten much better since we did the uh, the original taste test. So um, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna scale these up. So we're just gonna do some simple math. We're gonna do the amount of milliliters in five gallons. Um, we're gonna divide that by 100, and then we're gonna multiply all of our additions by that amount, and we're gonna see what we need to add. Okay, so we have our math here. Five gallons is 18,927 milliliters. We divide that by 100 milliliters because that's what our sample was. So we have 189.27 as our multiplier. So what we're going to do 
is do our 0.25 grams of acid blend times 189.27, and then we're going to actually we're going to divide that number by four because we're doing only a quarter of a gram, and we come out to 11.82 grams. Same thing for our wine tannin here. We're going to do 0.10 gram times 189.27, which is our multiplier. We're going to get that number and divide by four, and we're going to come out to 1.8927 grams of wine tannin. And then here we have our um, quarter teaspoon or just 0.25 times 1.8927 and we're going to get that number divided by 4 which should be the same as up there. The difference here is this is teaspoons not grams. So we're going to do 11.82 teaspoons of wine conditioner. So let me add these in. So what I'm actually going to do here is because I need to get this beer kegged um, I'm going to actually transfer the cider into a keg but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my additions at the bottom of the keg so that way they stir in nicely. Um, then we're going to cold crash, carbonate it, and taste it. <clears throat> so we're doing our acid blend right now. Trying to get to 11.82 or somewhere near it. Comes on quick, so we got to be careful here. There we go, pretty close. So now what we're going to do is just tear that. Now we got to add our 1.89 of wine tannin. <clears throat> All right, we went a little over, but not a big deal. So now here's our sanitized keg. Just going to pour that in. Then we're going to get our wine conditioner. <clears throat> and we need 11.82 teaspoons. So I'm going to do that off camera and add those to the keg as well. So now we have our... Acid blend, wine tannin, and wine conditioner in the keg. So now we're going to transfer in on top of it just to make sure it stirs up nicely. Then we're going to get it carbonated and we're going to taste it. <clears throat> okay, so we are all kegged. I purged the top of any oxygen. Now we're just going to get that wine tannin and wine conditioner and everything nice and mixed in. Just shake it up a little bit. And then we will get it ready to carbonate. All right, should be good. So this is not carbonated. This is only a couple minutes after I kegged it. We're just gonna see how the uh, how the blend came out in the full batch. So again, smells pretty damn good. Almost exactly the way it tasted in that sample. It's got just a perfect amount of tartness. Now again, this is the, fi the funky cider blend. So it should be a little more tart than normal. Because it does have lactobacillus and brett in it. Um, but it, it's almost exactly how I would want it. So all in all, this cider came out good. So that's pretty much the gist of cider. There's really nothing to it. Uh, no boiling, anything like that. Um, just notes that I didn't mention earlier in the video is when you do do cider, there is going to be a very big sulfur smell. I think I had briefly mentioned it, but uh, it is normal. Uh, just make sure you pitch plenty of yeast. Yeast nutrient is a must. That should go in, in the beginning of your, um, of your cider making process. Uh, make sure you put plenty in. Uh, without the yeast nutrient, the yeast will get stressed out. It may not even ferment all the way out. Um, so again, ciders should be dry. They should finish dry. You can sweeten them if you'd like, but there is such a thing as a dry cider. Most English ciders, if you've ever had one, they are very dry. Um, so dry ciders are just fine. Um, this was just how I wanted it to be. Um, 
numbers won't always match up to what I did today. That was just to my taste. Your taste may be different. You may like more tartness. You may like more sweetness. You may like more um, of that drying tannic uh, flavor. Whatever floats your boat. So that's the beauty as to why we do home brewing. Um, no matter what you make, you do it how you like it. So again, like, subscribe. Uh, any questions, comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section. I'll get back to you uh, as quick as I can. Um, again, don't kill me if I did anything that you may think is wrong. I am not a cider maker. This is only my second and third batch. Um, so I will be doing the dry hopped one uh, right after this. I'm not going to record that. If you have any questions about that one, feel free to ask. Uh, there will be some more videos coming out in the near future. Uh, if I don't post before the new year, happy holidays, happy new year, and uh, go Eagles 9-1.